So here we go again. Y'all know I'm still in the kitchen cooking as usual, adding a whole new meaning to cooking the books. So as you know, I've been doing a lot of study in cell, cell biology, developmental biology, and, and things of that nature. But uh, I want to discuss something a little bit different tonight. I was uh, actually reading John chapter 12, chapter 8, 12 through 20. Jesus says that he's the light. If any man follows him, he shall never be in darkness. So I thought that was interesting. You know, I, I, I said to myself, the metaphor that he uses is he compares himself to, a, to the light. And I said, uh, you know, that led me to studying uh, two subjects that are not really commonly discussed, right? Photosynthesis, which is this, this more common. But the second subject is, is uh, photospectroscopy. Now, I'm sure that's something that a lot of us probably are not familiar with because I wasn't familiar with, familiar with it until probably a couple weeks ago. It's called photo, photospectroscopy, which is the study of light interacting with matter, how light interacts with matter. So I want to discuss that. But before I do that, I want to discuss photosynthesis, something that we're all a little bit more familiar with. Now, before I go into that, real quick, quick, quick disclaimer, I am a Christian and I believe Jesus is black. Uh, the Bible tells me in Revelations that he had brown skin, you know, bronze, skin of bronze. That's brown skin. It's like skin of a penny. Uh, and that he had a, a hair of wool. That that sounds like a black man with dreads or rosters or whatever, you know. So, yeah. So that's just, just, just get that out the way. All right. Uh, <laughs> so now, I, like I said, you know, a metaphor. Well, we know. Look, if I let's say I smoke weed and I say I get as high as an airplane, the airplane is being used to depict or to exaggerate how high I really get. Or how I feel. So when Jesus said he's the light, the light is the metaphor to explain something greater about that light, about Jesus. But the light, there's something more profound about that light that Jesus is saying, I am like this. Right? We, we, you see where I'm going? I get as high as an airplane. We know an airplane flies thousands and thousands of feet in the air so you know that lets me know that the person is saying whatever they're smoking has them really 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 high uh jesus says i am the light of the world if any man follows me he shall never be in darkness so i said to myself all right i know what light is right i have a a very mundane common regular secular understanding of what light is like all of us but i think there's something deeper so I started looking at at light, studying light for the past you know week, week and a half, and I came across photospectroscopy. All right, so we're gonna discuss that some photospectroscopy, what that is, and uh, what light is, and so on and so forth. Now, before I do that, let's talk about photosynthesis really quick. We know that's where plants convert the sun. Jesus, Jesus is the son of God. The sun's light, right? Jesus said he's the light. So plants convert the sun light into energy right now the process by which this is done is the pigments in the plants the pigments are called chlorophyll we'll go through really quick a little bit of botany here right learn about some plants uh the pigments is called chlorophyll chlorophyll converts the sunlight into energy the way this is done uh in the in in, in the process of converting the sun's light to energy uh plants also photosynthesis also produces oxygen we know that we take in oxygen uh, when we take an oxygen, it oxida it goes through the oxidative process in our respiratory system, which means that it forms a molecule, a, co a compound, excuse me, a compound that's called carbon dioxide, which we exhale, which is a waste product that the plants then take in and make carbohydrates, the carbon, uh, and the water, the plants dismantle water molecules. And in the process of dismantling water molecules, they release oxygen. Because water molecule is H2O, H2O, right? Two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. The plants, when they dismantle the, the water molecule, they keep the, the hydrogen atoms, store that for water, and it, they the, the oxygen is actually a waste product for the plant, right? How interesting is that? That's a lesson right there, too. In this, it, it, that's a lesson inside of this lesson, because this wasn't the lesson I intention, intention, uh, intend, intended to speak on, but here's a lesson inside the lesson. The plants dismembers or dis, you know, discards 
the oxygen atom and keeps the two hydrogen atoms. The oxygen atom to the plant is a waste product. To you and I, it's life, right? We need oxygen. Like, it's, it's essential to our, you know, sustenance. And we take in the oxygen, put it through a process of mixture, and with, with carbon that's already in our body. We get carbon from foods that we eat, air that we breathe, etc. So carbon's already in our body. So the oxygen that the plant discards, we take that in, mesh that or fuse that with carbon and make carbon dioxide. Then we spit out carbon dioxide. The plant takes that in and converts that into their food. And, and then the cycle continues, right? So that's interesting. So the carbohydrates and it, that the plants take make, excuse me, uh, and the oxygen are two things that we need and we use. So we eat the plant and we get the carbohydrates. If you don't eat the plant, you, the animal that you eat, he eats the plant and you eat the animal. So there's an interconnectedness, the life cycle. It's in, it's intricately interwoven uh, to where not, nothing goes to waste in this context. The waste products, we both, man, animals, and plants take each other's waste products and use it as uh food and i thought i thought that was very interesting uh just an interesting observation i'm sure some of us learned this in elementary or junior high school whatever i don't remember but yeah i'm sure a lot of us are familiar with that so that's nothing new but i just thought it would be it's pertinent to the uh the subject matter jesus saying he's the light because right there we're seeing how plants provide a sus uh a necessity a necessary uh a vital energy for all of all, all of living organisms because everyone breathes in oxygen. So we're seeing right there, Jesus is saying, I am the light. And in this regard, the light provide the light catalyzes photosynthesis, right? The light catalyzes for the photosynthetic process that feeds the world because everyone breathes air. We all take in oxygen, right? Excuse me. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, now, I want to discuss, so again, like I said, so I said to myself, I want to study the light. I want to, you know, what, what can I learn about light, right? So we can, so I can draw and extract a deeper or more profound, uh, you know, implications or more profound connotations and associations from what Jesus is saying uh, in terms of the metaphor. And I came across a, a subject that's called spectroscopy, and I mentioned it a second ago. Spectroscopy is the study of light. And its interactions with matter, all matter. And then I came across photobiology, a study of how light interacts with, with organisms. And in so doing, I came across some really, really uh, powerful, potent, and useful gems. One is, in the field of spectroscopy, the first rule of spectroscopy is that in order for, uh, for light to have an effect on an object... The object must absorb the light. So the rule is light must be absorbed by an object before there can be an effect. Light must be absorbed by an object before there can be an effect. There's also two fields within spectroscopy that's called absorption spectrum and uh, action spectrum. Now, the action spectrum is the result of the absorption spectrum. What I mean by that is the absorption spectrum measures how much of the light an object absorbs. How much of the light an object absorbs? Absorption spectrum. Action spectrum is after the absorption, what are the effects? How strong are the effects or the results of the light on the object? So when Jesus says he is the light, depending on how strong, how much of Jesus you're absorbing, you know, how much of the light of Christ you are absorbing. Remember, plants absorb light, convert it into energy. How much are you photosynthesizing Christ? The photosynthetic process. Are you photosynthesizing the light of Christ? That is the absorption spectrum, and it can be measured. As a result of that measurement, we can see the effects. Jesus cannot come into you, and you absorb him, his light, and there be and there 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 is not an effect, a conspicuous, obvious, life altering, upside down world turning effect. There must be an uh, end game. There must be a resultant. There must be something that is, uh, again, extremely conspicuous, obvious, clearly 
transparently seen. So the absorption spectrum and the action spectrum and the first law of spectroscopy is that light must be absorbed before it can take and have root or take before it can take root and have an effect. That's the first law. Now, again, this is a field of spectroscopy. You guys can research this. This stuff is this is very powerful stuff. But it's it it helps me to understand or to get a better comprehension of why Jesus uses the light to compare himself to, as opposed to water or you know wind or you know any other element. He chooses light. So that's that's so these are some of the things I'm learning about light, and I'm seeing the core. I'm seeing the profound meaning. You know the the other. The, the 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 secret meaning the 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 coded meaning and what is like so in studying light i also we also i you know i found out that what light is it's it's an, it's the short answer is it's energy right that's i think that's pretty easy uh but what the properties of light, the ingredients of light, are actually called photons, which are microscopic and you know, not even my subatomic. They're 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 uh, incredibly uh, diminutive uh, particles, and they are considered force carriers because they carry the force of light. They're called photons. So light is made out of fo light is made of or consists of or comprised of photons, and uh, the, these are the uh, the carriers of the wave of light. And uh, what what spectroscopy all further teaches us is that whether light several things happen when light interacts with matter, right? There is it's either a uh, transmittance, right? So it passes right through. Think about that. How many of us hear about Jesus in one ear and it goes right out the other, right? Spectroscopy, science, backing up the word of God, right? Jesus, so many of us hear about him, goes in one ear, right out the other. Spectroscopy comes and tells us that light can be transmitted. Take a flashlight, shine it against a window, it goes right through, right? Uh, whether the light goes through the object or is transmitted, which is the same thing, or is reflected, or it is absorbed, or is refracted, or diffracted, or scattered, whether that happens rest solely upon the object spectroscopy if you study spectroscopy it teaches photospectroscopy teaches you that what the interaction with with the object what light does when it interacts with an object rests solely upon the object not on the light and I love that. I love that science because Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. He didn't say I'm the light of some people, the light of a few people, the light of short people, tall people, fat people, skinny people. I'm the light of the world. There's no discrimination. Light shines on everyone. But here's the <laughs> spectroscopy just gave me some insight. What, how light affects you or me how the light of Christ is going to be received or not received depends solely upon the contents of myself, upon the contents of yourself. Light interacts, the way light interacts with an object rests exclusively upon the objects. The science behind that, spec, spec, photospectroscopy, explains to me that the science behind that, the formula, the reason, is that when light comes in contact with an object, uh, every atom, we all are made of atoms, everything has atoms, uh, the way the electrons are arranged within the atom will determine whether the light is absorbed, transmitted, refracted, reflected, or scattered. So what that tells me is, depending on how you and I, human, human organisms, depending on our disposition, our psychological disposition, our intellectual disposition, our emotional disposition, our heart, you know, the, 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 how our being, I was, you know, our self, our being, our innermost parts, depending on how we are arranged, right, depending on how we are configured within ourselves will determine how the light of Christ interacts with us. That's what spectroscopy is teaching us. That dependent, it's not, the light is not responsible to be received by you. The light is not responsible to be transmitted by you. If you, if you have a, a mirror in your house and you shine a light on your mirror, that light is going to be reflected off of the mirror. 
Why is it reflected off the mirror, but it passes through the window? You see what I'm saying? Why, why is Jesus, the light of Jesus, received by and transforms and transmute one person's life, but has no effect on the other person's life? Is Jesus biased? Is he a favor? Is he favoritism? Maybe. But the word says, I'm the light of the world. That's, that's, uh, you know, that's universal. That doesn't sound like any favoritism or biasness. They say, I'm the light of the world. So why, why, why is the light of the world changing this guy's life, but not this guy or this girl's and not that girl? Spectroscopy speaks again and says that the, 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 the interaction between light and object rests, the result of the light on the object rests solely upon the object, not on the light. And the science behind that is based off the configuration of the particles within the object. How the atoms, how the electrons are arranged or configured determines how that light is either, if it's going to be received, transmitted, reflected, or refracted. And a lot of us think about this, right? Light comes into our lives and we do what? We, we, we reflect it. We reflect the light of Christ. We, we, he shows us the light, we, we throw it away, we give it back to him. Here, take it. Return to sender. We reflect it. Uh, refraction means to, to, you know, there's like a, a change in the direction. Defraction means like a bending. How many of us bend the truth? We bend it to fit our narrative. We bend it to fit our lifestyles. We bend it because we don't want to bend. Because the truth, the light will force us to bend, right? It'll force us to contort, right? To twist, to turn, to make some, some uh, morphological changes. And that's something that's difficult or maybe inconvenient or uncomfortable to do. So rather than morph to the, to the truth, we try to morph the truth to us to our way, to our way of seeing things. So how many of us are bending the truth, right? How many of us scatter it? And again, like I said, how many, why is it light shines on a, a window and it, it goes right through, transmit, shines on a, a mirror and it reflects? It's, it's not the light that reflects or passes through, but rather the contents of that glass and the contents of the mirror. It is the properties, the ingredients of each object that determines what light does. Light According to spectroscopy, photospectroscopy does one of several things. Transmit, reflex, refracts, defracts, or absorbed or scattered. All of these, any of these several things are predicated and based solely upon the material of the matter, the contents of the matter, the uh, ingredients of the matter, and not on the light itself. It has nothing to do with the light itself. So when the light of Christ interacts with us, whether that light is absorbed, the absorption spectrum, or the, e, e, the uh, action spectrum, whether that light takes effect, root, and have some kind of change in us, it's not on the light's responsibility, but is our responsibility. It's the disposition of our hearts, the configuration of our minds that will determine what that light does. So, you know, r realizing and also understanding that light, again... Light led me to study the electromagnetic spectrum. We operate within uh, a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that's called the visible light spectrum, which, is co which comprises several, seven different wavelengths. Each wavelength has a corresponding color, and uh, you have high frequency, low frequency. And depending on how, again, you interact with the light, well, remember, plants can absorb light by means of their pigments. We can do the same thing and to some extent, not as we don't harvest the sunlight as efficient as the plants because the plants were that's their main source right that's their source of of life of energy of fuel so they they are equipped with the armamentarium right to be able to make the most use of the sun we we have to some extent the same to some extent we have those armaments because it's the pigment in the plant chlorophyll the most conspicuous and obvious for us, it's the pigment. We have our pigment is called melanin, right? I'm light skin, so I have what's called feel melanin. And if you have your darker skin, you have what's called you melanin. And the the cells that produce melanin within us is called melanocyte melanocytes. And when you're in the sun, the the rays from the sun 
interact with the mel melanocytes and produce more melanin. And therefore, that's why you get dark if you're in the sun too long. You get really dark. Your skin get dark. Or you can even get sunburned. Or if you don't have the right melanin or the sufficient amount of melanin, you get melanoma, which is a skin cancer. So we do harvest the sun to some extent. And, and, and we harvest the light from the sun to some extent. And this, this harvesting of the light is, again, why Jesus says, I am the light. He chose the light as a metaphor to show what he brings into your life, okay? The power, the potency of the power that he brings into your life, that it is able to alter, to modify, to change, to transmute uh, you into a whole new being, a whole new creature. Should you, should you, should you, remember, the, 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 the... The result is based on the object, not the light. Spectroscopy teaches us that how the light interacts with the object depends solely upon the object, the arrangement, the disposition. So should you absorb, and absorption means you spend time in prayer, you spend time in meditation, you spend time in study. All of this is practical application of the word absorption. Absorption don't mean you show up in church on Sunday for an hour or so, and then, you know, that's it. You're back out doing God knows what, right? So you have, and, and, and if you, to, if you have to spend time absorbing, you know, uh, the light of Christ, right? And uh, again, one of the things that I think is very, very practical is meditation. Meditation is an excellent way to absorb the light of Christ. And once you absorb that light, again, you see what it does with photosynthesis. So you are photosynthesizing Christ's light. You're photosynthesizing the word and, uh, the, the, you know, the effect, the, the action spectrum will be a measurement of how effective that light is being in your life. But that must first be based on the absorption spectrum. So photospectroscopy really, for me, gave me a greater depth, a greater meaning, a greater understanding uh, of what or why Jesus chose to use the light as a metaphor. And now I can see why and what Christ represents uh, in terms of the metaphor. I have a, a much deeper Understanding. So I hope this gave you some uh, nuggets, you know, a little bit of uh, wisdom, a little bit of uh, some some jewels or whatever. Until next time, you know what I'm going to be doing. I'll be cooking the books and giving a whole new meaning to cooking those books. See you soon.